When creating a stylized visual effect, it's always important to add in enough details to make it as appealing as possible. For this tornado effect, I took the BMS approach, which stands for big, medium, and small, meaning an effect should have big elements, medium-sized elements, as well as small elements to feel complete. Before we dive into the tutorial, I just want to emphasize some basic skills or knowledge of Blender that will help you follow along easier. Pretty much just basic knowledge of shading, modeling, animation, and modifiers. Make sure to enable your Node Wrangler add-on and select EV as your render engine. Alright, let's go! Starting with the tornado itself, we're going to shape it up with a primitive 3D shape. In this case, a cylinder. We'll stretch it up, delete its faces at the top and bottom, and shape it into an hourglass figure. You can bevel in more lines and add more loops and create a smoother shape if you want. Once you have the desired shape, it's time to give it texture. Everything will be done through basic modifiers. We're going to start by adding a subdivision surface modifier to add more faces and smooth it out. Then we're going to create a texture with a displace modifier. We can add a new texture for the displace modifier by clicking here. I'll choose the Voronoi type of texture. Then I'll go back to my displace modifier and regulate its strength. Always keep in mind you don't have to copy my exact values, I encourage you to play with the sliders and see what style you prefer. Once I'm done with the displace modifier, I'll add in a simple deform modifier set to twist on the z-axis and increase the angle value until I'm satisfied. I'll sometimes go back to modify the shape a little and even animate its z-axis with the driver line, hashtag frame forward slash, whatever value you put in, so I can see it in action. You can adjust a driver value to 3, 4, 5, or really any number you want, depending on what speed you prefer. I'll add a wave modifier to create this pulsating effect on the tornado since it's sucking up air. I mainly play with the height, width, narrowness, and speed values to make it more or less violent. It depends on what kind of effect you want to create. I also ended up deciding to put it before the displace modifier within the stack, so it doesn't make the texture details overlap on one another like this. Putting it before messes with the displace texture less. Finally, we're going to move on to shading and coloring our tornado. When adding a new material, I'll add an emission shader and that's going to be colored by a Voronoi texture node set to UV coordinates. It's very important to have it set to UV texture coordinates so it follows the modifier stacks effects. I'll also add a color ramp node after my Voronoi texture node to add in some colors. Don't be shy to experiment with the different blend modes to see what style you prefer most. Now I'm going to add a mix shader node so that I can add another emission node to my setup. What I want is a type of rim light that wraps around the edges of my tornado to glow it up more. So I'm going to add a layer weight node to my new setup and add to it a color ramp node to control the light effect as well as its color. Once I'm done, I went into the compositor tab and added a glare node to view the tornado with a bloom effect. Don't forget to go into your viewport shading menu on the upper right hand corner and make sure to select always under compositor. Set the glare type settings to your liking but make sure the threshold value is low enough and that your emission node strengths are high enough to get an effective bloom effect. This is the final shader node setup and this is the final compositor node setup. Moving on to the ground impact effect, it'll be done by a simple circle shape. I'll add a circle to my scene and extrude it inwards to create a set of faces. Then I'm going to create UV seams on its inner and exterior edges, as well as one line connecting both edges. The reason for this is because I want to make its UVs square shaped to create the desired shockwave effect. Now when unwrapping, do not select the typical angle based option, but rather unwrap minimal stretch. If you look at the result, we already get very close to a squarish or rectangular-ish form. Now select the first edge along its length, right click and select align vertically. Then do the same on the other edge. Then do the same for all of the smaller edges in between except this time when right clicking choose align horizontally. To make it faster I added them to my quick favorites menu.
Once I'm done, I'll place the UV map right on the 2D cursor and begin to scale my UV map along the whole grid. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'll go back to my shading tab, create a new material, add a wave texture node with a color ramp set to emission node, and most importantly, make sure the texture coordinates are set to UV. Play with your color ramp and wave scale settings to create the preferred width of the shock wave. And finally, add another hashtag frame forward slash value driver to the phase offset slider of your wave texture to set up its animation speed. Now add a noise texture set to UV coordinates as well and connect it to the scale value of the wave textures mapping node. This will allow the noise texture to distort the wave texture node. Play with the noise's scale and color ramp node sliders to get the desired shock wave effect. Then add a mix shader node. Connect the emission node to its bottom socket. Add a transparent node and connect it to its top socket. Then connect the wave texture setup to the factor socket up top. It's very important to make sure you're in the EV render engine and not cycles, so that when you press N in the shader compositor window, the side tabs come out. Go to the options tab and change the render method from dithered to blended. This way you no longer have a noise transparent effect, but a smooth one instead. Now I'll add some color to my shockwave and then play with the object scale to adjust it according to my tornado. Now, technically we're done with the shockwave effect, but if you want to polish it a little more, we can add transparency on its edges so that there isn't a sharp cutoff as the shockwave pushes out. Add another mix shader node, connect the first shader to its bottom socket, the same transparency node to its top socket, and then add a gradient node set to UV coordinates with its texture coordinate mapping and color ramp nodes and connect that setup to the mix shader's factor socket. Add a third slider to the color ramp node, sandwich the white slider between two black sliders, and set the interpolation to ease. You can adjust the appropriate black slider of the gradient's color ramp node to adjust the level of feathering you have on the edge of the shockwave object. Here is the final node setup. Now we're moving into another detail to polish our tornado effect, which is going to be white gust being sucked up from the air around the tornado. Simply duplicate the core tornado object and scale it wider. Delete its displace and second subdivision modifier since they don't add anything and will potentially lag your viewport. And lastly, delete its material, we'll create a new one. In the new material, add a mixed shader node coupled with an emission node to its bottom socket and a transparent node on its top socket. And on the factor socket, connect a setup consisted of a Veronoi texture node set to UV coordinates with a color ramp node. Again, if you're getting a noisy transparent effect, don't forget to be in EV. Press N in the shader window to open the side tabs. Go to options and change the render method to blended. Play with the color ramp sliders as well as the Voronoi scale values to get the kind of gust you want. It can be thick or thin. Then make sure to delete the object's z-axis rotation driver and instead add a new hashtag frame forward slash value driver on the y-axis of the mapping node's location value. If you now play with your animation, you should have Gust being pulled upwards. This is the final node setup. Another detail we want to add to polish our tornado effect is a small ring of dust at its base that is being sucked in by the tornado and kept around its orbit. To create the object, simply add a circle to the scene, adjust its scale and in edit mode extrude it upwards to create a cylinder shape. Add a loop cut in the middle and scale it outwards to create a curved shape. Just like in the shockwave object before, add UV seams on the object's edges and one crossing edge between them and unwrap using the minimal stretch option. Then in the UV editing tab, align the vertical lines along the x-axis or vertically and the small crossing edges between them horizontally or the y-axis. Once that's done, stretch out the UV map along the UV grid. Now create a new material, change its transparent render method from dither to blended and add in a mix shader with a transparent and emission node. Connect the emission node to the bottom socket and the transparent node to the top socket. Add in a noise texture, set to UV coordinates as always, and a color ramp node. Connect that setup to the factor socket of your mix shader node. 
Play with your scale and color ramp values to get your preferred look. For this one, I decided to go with a constant blend mode in my color ramp node because it looks more stylized and fits the overall tornado look. Once you're done with shading your dust, add in a hashtag frame forward slash value driver in its Z-axis rotation. I made it a little slower than the tornado for animation contrast and finally, add a wave modifier set to animate along its normals to give it a pulse animation effect. Here is the final node setup. And for the final piece of detail, we're going to add some particle-like debris around the tornado. Very simply duplicate the tornado object and scale it wide. You can even adjust its shape in edit mode to bring it to your satisfaction. Then, in the modifier stack, delete the displace, second subdivision, and simple the form modifiers. They are not needed and it's a good habit not to add any extra load on Blender. We don't even need to play with the UVs this time. Just add a new material and the usual transparent node setup. So a mixed shader node with a transparent node connected to the top socket and an emission node connected to the bottom socket. To create the debris, we're just going to create a Voronoi texture and connect it to a color ramp node. Connect that setup to the mix shader's factor socket and then scale the Voronoi effect way down and adjust the color ramp node to your liking until you get some particle looking debris. Give it some color and voila! You got yourself some debris rotating around the tornado. Here is the final node setup. Alright, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've learned something new today and if you have any questions, write them in the comment section below and I'll get to them as fast as possible. Bye bye.